I'm Stéphane Elringer from Johns Hopkins University, and it is my pleasure to present this year's Clifford C. Clogg Award for Mid-Career Achievement. It honors outstanding innovative scholarly achievements of population professionals who have attained their highest professional degree within the previous 10 to 20 years. The award is sponsored by PAA in association with the Population Research Institute at Pennsylvania State University. It commemorates the memory and creative contributions of Clifford C. Clogg to the fields of quantitative methods and labor force demography. This year's selection committee included Onibushi Ara from UCLA, Chenoa Flippen from the University of Pennsylvania, Paula Fombi from the University of Michigan, as well as two former winners of this award, Susan Brown from Bowling Green State University and Jennifer Van Hook from Pennsylvania State University. I want to thank the committee for its diligent work in reviewing a large number of nominations for outstanding applicants. This year, the committee selected two co-winners of the Clifford C. Clogg Award. This was an obvious decision as the co-winners stood out by their impressive record of scholarly work and were united in having pushed the boundaries of population research at the intersection of demography and genetics. In alphabetical order, our first co-winner is Jason Boardman, who is Professor of Sociology at the University of Colorado Boulder. Professor Boardman has published more than 100 peer-reviewed papers and his work has been cited close to 7,000 times. He has made continued efforts to highlight population research as fundamental to our understanding of complex genetic associations and to emphasize to demographers the importance of genetics to their work. He has investigated gene-environment interactions related to health behaviors such as smoking, and he was one of the PIs for the first genome-wide genotyping of respondents from the National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent to Adult Health. In addition to his scholarly contributions, Professor Boardman has been a leader in efforts to promote interdisciplinary work and to train the next generation of scholars in demography and genetics. Our other co-winner is Melinda Mills, who is Professor of Sociology at the University of Oxford, where she also directs the Center for Demographic Science. Professor Mills has made a mark on diverse areas of population studies, and her work has been cited close to 8,000 times. Her focus has been on generating genetic discoveries, particularly as they relate to the study of fertility and partnerships. Professor Mills has played a key role in highlighting the pitfalls of combining genetics and social science, including the need for more representative and diverse genetic data that includes those beyond European ancestry. Professor Mills also works in the area of structural constraint on family formation and fertility, and over the past few months, she has spearheaded her center's research response to the COVID-19 pandemic, already resulting in key insights on the role of demographic factors in explaining pandemic outcomes. Please join me in congratulating these two outstanding scholars for their award. I'm both honored and humbled to have my name associated with the Clifford Clogg, who made game-changing contributions to population research. I'm equally honored to have my name associated with the previous awardees who comprise some of the very best and most influential demographers of our time. This list includes Bob Hummer and Kathy Harris, both of whom I regularly depend on for advice. I'm fortunate to have my research supported by the Institute of Behavioral Science and the NICHD supported University of Colorado Population Center to be able to walk down the hall and pick the brains of Jane Minkin, Rick Rogers, Myron Gutman, Dick Jesser, and many others as such an incredible intellectual resource. It's almost impossible for me to think about this award as something that's given to me, but rather an award given to this larger group as a whole. And over the past decade, this group has grown to include a spectacular cast of pre and postdoctoral researchers in the area of demography and genetics. I'm also grateful to have had the opportunity to work with so many supportive and hardworking individuals at both NICHD and NIA. In particular, I wanted to express my gratitude to Rebecca Clark, who in 2004 first discussed the idea of me submitting a KO1 to gain training in genetics, and she held my hand through the entire application process. I'd like to also thank my family for putting up with my absent-minded professorness for all these years, and we can look forward to more of those years down the road. Thank you all very much.
what an honor it is to receive the Clifford C. Clogg Award for Mid-Career Achievements. Actually, this is what I would look like uh, if I was able to accept it, if it wasn't for the coronavirus. But I'd really like to thank those who nominated me, including Francesco Bellari, who first welcomed me to the University of Oxford, and Jennifer Beam Dowd, who recently joined, and all of my supportive colleagues at Nuffield College, the University of Oxford in Sociology, and our newly founded Leverhulme Center for Demographic Science. My gratitude goes to Frank Tovato from the University of Alberta in Canada, who first introduced me to the wonderful world of demography, and my PhD supervisor, Franz Willig from Cronian. But thanks also to many of my inspiring colleagues and supportive bosses throughout the years, like Hans-Peter Blossfeld, who helped foster and teach me about work-life reconciliation. And my inspiration and admiration also goes to all of my amazing PhD students. Um, I'm really glad that you still fit onto one page. <laughs> but you taught me and we learned how to work together as a strong team and family. And no, that isn't a child prodigy at the bottom. That's my daughter who loves to photobomb pictures. <laughs> and also the postdocs that I've had the honor to work with over the years. I dragged many of you with me, often on the road less traveled. In my quest to try to find a genetic and biological basis of fertility behavior. And I really can't thank you enough for believing in me and my sometimes very eccentric ideas. But nothing would have been possible without the support of risk-taking funders, and particularly the European Research Council for a Consolidator and Advance Grant and the Leverhulme Trust for a Large Center Grant. Thank you from Oxford and see you next year at the PAA.